today on Breaking Views. The Bank of England has publicly questioned whether domestic lenders are adequately provisioned against future losses. A probe Reuters Breaking Views says could put the heat on RBS. With me now to discuss is Breaking Views' Robert Cole. Robert, that was a very long way of, of saying a UK bank capital probe puts the heat on RBS. <laughs> What's all this about? Go on, this this well, starts from last it, week, doesn't it? It does start from last week and there was um, a report by one of the sort of other bits of the Bank of England which doesn't do interest rates, the financial stability uh, authorities, uh, into, into UK banks. And it would got some coverage last week and we wrote on it, but I can't help feeling that actually this is actually a bit more important than perhaps is being given credit for. And as soon as we start saying capital probe and capital adequacy, I, I do forgive people for falling, to, falling asleep a bit. But actually, I think it's important to, to focus on this because this is, if you read it, read the report, it's saying in quite clear terms this is that a large banks don't <laughs> have enough money to do what they want to do. Okay. Um, at the same time, you know, the, the Bank of England did, you know, drop the heaviest of hints without actually naming the guilty parties. The piece we wrote last week sort of uh, reminded us what the Swiss Central Bank did with C Credit Suisse, and it just came out and said, Credit Suisse guys, you haven't got enough money. Credit Suisse sort of huffed and puffed a bit, but eventually sort of stumped up. Right. But so, so, and you know, UK lending is important, uh, bank lending is important, you know, and clearly the, 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 there is a, a potential liability on us. Uh, the UK tax, uh, taxpayer as okay. well. Well, let's put some, put some figures on it. We're talking about a commercial property uh, loan book, a mere £66 billion pounds well, it, does, it doesn't necessarily... I mean, it's, these are not small amounts of money. Mm. And I, I, perhaps it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do the next bit of the Bank of England's job, which is to name those banks which are, which are under such pressure. And, of course, mm. actually, we've only got two, and they're both pretty much nationalised. One is the RBS, of course, and mm. one is Lloyd's, which took over the... Very troubled H boss, and it's got to be RBS, where perhaps the sort of uh, investors' questions will be focused, and that's all we're saying. And when you say this investors, morning, are we talking about us, you and me, the people who own it, or are we taking the government and saying the Bank of England's actually having a quick nudge at the government and saying, help? Uh, well, and, and this is the other sort of question that's raised, really, is that mm. you know th there seems to be such a sort of obvious case to answer, which is sort of not being answered. And is, the, is, <laughs> is that in the week of the autumn, the UK autumn statement that yeah. you know nobody actually wants to admit the fact that RBS might need another shovel load of money in terms of equity from the government? Having said that, of course, there are other ways of getting out of this problem: asset sales. Mm. Uh, being one of them, you know, these cocoa bonds might, might be another one. So it doesn't necessarily rebound on the UK taxpayer in a direct way, although in an indirect way it will one way or another. The thing that worried me more was the fact that it's not just property. There are other things that these people at the Bank of England are worried about as well. Well, I, th I think... That Eurozone y yeah, ex exactly. exposure? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and there is a, a, a litany of, uh, of different issues that have to be addressed. And mm. while one can understand the reticence of the bank and the government, either for pure financial reasons, and, you know, the, if the Bank of England is thinking, you know, we don't want to sort of name and shame these people because they don't bank runs and so on. So you can understand their caution. But I guess having done two pieces on this, breaking views sort of view, is that, you know, this is something that we should be taking quite seriously, not in an alarmist kind of way, but there's a problem there that needs to be addressed. And it's our, I think we're kind of confident that the banks certainly know that they're, they're up against it and they're working hard to do something about it. But it would be um, foolish, I think, to sweep these things under the carpet. And all in all, it means that we are going to keep our 81% ownership of the Royal Bank of Scotland for quite some time. Uh, I can't see <laughs> that really being, you know, sold. Or if it is sold giving us that much money, really. I'm not sure that that's a terribly controversial thing to say. And, of, of course, as time goes on, it seems to me that the value of this thing goes down and down and down, and the, and the solutions uh, to the whole big problem become more about new banks, smaller banks, split-up yeah. banks, yeah. these sort of big behemoths of the sort that RBS was. I think maybe one way or another... Uh, things past. OK, Robert, thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, my thanks to Robert for more agenda-setting financial insight. Watch our US Breaking Views show every day, 12.30 Eastern, that's 17.30 GMT. I'm Nigel Stevenson, this is Reuters.